Okay, so up to now, I think we have defined all the mathematical. Uh, we have we have quantified like what finite element is doing mathematically, but we still haven't touched any differential equations, right? I'm still in the a stage of how do I approximate a function. So how do I solve differential equations? Uh, well, let me. Before I solve differential equations, let me give another example of. Uh, uh, let, let me give a slightly more complex example of uh, basically what I showed a little bit earlier. So, so in this in this case, I'm using the, the only difference. Uh, well, the primary difference between different finite element schemes is what linear space I'm using, right? So here. I'm actually using a different linear space. If I draw something that is like this, wild, uh, this, uh, I'm actually doing approximation like this. So, so the solid uh, red line is my approximation in a different space. So, so can somebody point out what's the difference between this and uh, the example I showed just now? Both are finite elements. This also looks like piecewise straight lines, right? But what's the difference between this and uh, this? And this? What's the difference between this and that? Yes? This one is discontinuous. This one, it seems every uh, every piece is continuous, right? That's actually the only difference. So, so the most uh, uh, one of the most uh, popular functions to choose in solving differential equations is uh, the space of continuous piecewise linear functions. Okay, so so I have a uh, I have a function space, let's say between zero and one. I divide the interval into small intervals. And uh, I force my space to be any function that within every two grid points, or in the finite element jargon, within every element. So, so each of these is an element. Okay, within each element is a is a linear function. is basically a straight line. But when in between every element, you you can you can turn the function can turn. It can have different slopes, but it cannot be discontinuous. It has to be at the same. It has to agree in value, but not in gradient uh, at the element interface. And it's popular because you can do exactly the same thing for 2D and 3D. I mean, in 2D, you have to have triangles, right? So, so in 2D, as long as you have triangles, uh, you have a triangular discretization of the space. No matter what triangles you use, it's fine. Uh, you can you can set okay you, you can imagine you draw a contour uh, you can draw a contour of this uh, to be to uh, to approximate pretty much arbitrary functions right so you can have piecewise uh, linear functions within each triangle and uh, they all agree on the boundaries and uh, on the on the nodes and in 3D you have to have tetrahedrals but you can do exactly the same thing okay uh but for this space, it's a little bit more tricky to construct the basis functions. So, so let's say this is a, a zero uh, and a zeroth grid point, uh, the first x one, etc., to x n. So, if I have n plus one grid points and n elements, what dimension? What's the dimension of this space? What's the dimension of the space here? Uh, think of an example. What what if n is equal to one? We just figured it out, right? N equal to one. We just have one element, two, right? So d is equal to two. How about two? How about two elements? Three, right? Because you need uh, for for two elements. You you have a function like this. You have another function like this. You have this, right? So you you because I have to be continuous. 
I can't just have a function that goes up to here without going down in the next element. If I go up here, I have to go down over here, right? So n equal to three. Right, I have first a function here, uh, second function I have to go up and then go down, third function I have to go up and go down, and I have a fourth function, go up, right? D is equal to four. So in general, D is equal to what? N plus one, right? This is a, uh, this is uh, what I would, uh, this is the dimension of the space I have without restricting any boundaries, right? So in solving differential equations, I actually have boundary conditions. So the dimension is gonna be less, right? Because uh, for example, if I have zero Dirichlet boundary condition, the red basis function wouldn't exist anymore. The black basis function also wouldn't exist anymore, right? So, so if I have Dirichlet boundary condition on both sides, the dimension would be n minus one as opposed to n plus one. So for example, this is a natural way, this is a, uh, to, to put boundary conditions on differential equations. It's just that the space becomes smaller, lower dimensional. Okay, so now I have this uh, uh, space of continuous piecewise linear functions and uh, this kind of a basis is called a nodal basis. So, so for a nodal basis, uh, the maximum of these basis functions has always to be one, and uh, uh, they peak at each node. It's called a nodal basis because uh, if I, for, for any function f within the space x, I can write f as a summation of a i times h i, where a i is actually equal to f at x i, right? That's, a, that's the special thing about the nodal basis. Note that, okay, so, so that looks pretty much like finite difference, but it's not. The key difference is that for finite difference, the value I store in the computer is the value of the function for any function. For, for nodal basis finite element, the value I store, which is are these AIs, are values of the function at the grid points. Only if the function is in this space of continuous piecewise linear space, right? As you can see that if a function is not, like the, the weekly function I draw, is not a member of these piecewise continuous linear functions, then the values I store, for example, look at over here, is actually not the value of the function at the grid points. So that's, that's something that can be confusing between finite difference and the nodal basis, what we call nodal basis finite element, yeah. right? For, for finite difference, the values I would store would be here, and for nodal basis finite element, the value I would store would actually be here. All right, do we have questions on this? Okay, so um, projection would be pretty much the same, right? So if I have a function I want to approximate, I would be still solving AX equal to B, where uh, AIJ is still equal to the integration of omega HI HJ DX, and the B I would still be integration of F0 HI DX, except for these H, H's are different. Right, whatever h I use for the previous case is now different in this case. 